Man, have you ever seen anything like this? I'm so excited today because my journey of trying to find what is the best ProSax on the market today has brought me to test this incredible new saxophone. It's from a company called Geneva and it's called the OW Lineage Tenor. It's the brainchild of a British saxophone maker called Dave Walker. So these are quite exclusive. There are hardly any of these in the world. Uh, and very luckily for me, I'll get a chance to test one of them out for you guys today. I'm gonna to put it through its paces, try it in a bunch of different playing styles, and also evaluate it on a bunch of different points, actually, to see if this is the best saxophone that you can get on the market today. Stick around, it's gonna be so much fun, I can't wait to get started. Hey, of course, if you're new here, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on new videos as well. All right, then enough chit chat. Let's get stuck in and start checking out this saxophone. <laughs> Hey, g'day, it's Nigel Lee from Sax School. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for another one of these videos. So this question of what is the best saxophone on the market today, it's something that comes up a lot in my Sax School community. We've got thousands of learners now, and they're all looking for help with that. To be honest with you, it's something that I needed to find out about as well, because I'm looking to change my long-standing Dave Guadala tenor I've had for like 27 years. So these series of videos, including this one today, is all about helping my sax school students and you to find out a bit more about the saxophones that are on the market at the moment. So I've reached out to a bunch of people and they've very graciously let me test these saxophones and hopefully by me putting them through their paces in a bunch of different playing styles and also looking at a bunch of different points on these saxophones, it helps you with that choosing process. Now, in today's video, I'm going to play this saxophone in four different playing styles just to see how it performs, how it sounds, how it feels under my fingers, and then give you my comments at the end. Um, but before that, I'm also gonna talk through a bunch of features on this particular saxophone. If you just wanna jump to where I start playing this saxophone, then go to this time up here You'll miss all the important stuff, but you'll get to hear me playing it. And uh, at least if that's what you're interested, you can get, get there straight away. So let's start by talking about all the things on this saxophone that make it different. First of all, what even is this saxophone? I mean, have you seen anything like this before? Well, I reached out to a local saxophone maker called Dave Walker. He runs a music shop in Leeds in England here. And he's been a well-known repairer on the British scene for decades. But for a number of years, like 10 or more years, he's been developing like a little skunk works, I suppose, in the background, this saxophone. And guys like Jerry Bergonzi are playing it. A lot of the new heavyweight saxophone players in England are playing versions of this saxophone as well. And then finally, he's taken all the stuff that he's developed from these amazing saxophones he's created for these amazing artists, and he's distilled it into this, which is kind of like a, a pre-production uh, run of saxophones. So he's only made a few of these so far, but he's combining all the elements that he's developed over these years of refinement. And what really caught my eye and what I want, why I wanted to check it out is because I actually think Dave is doing something a bit different. Dave is pushing the envelope, in my opinion, on saxophone design. And he's come up with loads of really cool things that are not just cool because they look fun, but because they're actually functional, and more importantly, they sound and feel amazing. Now, this is an expensive saxophone, and I'll tell you about how the pricing compares actually a little bit later on. But instantly, when you see this saxophone, it's striking. Now, I asked Dave to give me this silver one to try out, and yes, I do need to give it back. So we've got a silver plated model here, but he also does this in two other variations, in a red brass and in a yellow brass. And they're like an unlacquered kind of finish and they look awesome, particularly if you like that vintage looking saxophone. They look a little bit gnarly and raw and very, very cool. This particular model has also got this amazing copper neck. So it's copper here with his fantastic free floating neck system, which looks incredible, but actually it also works fantastically. Dave's logic behind all of this is that there's very little contact with the mechanism and the actual neck. So things like that are really, really interesting to me because they have a function in them. Let's carry on and talk a bit about mechanism on the saxophone. Now I mentioned the neck, uh, that's definitely a standout feature, and I've not seen anything like that. Yanagasawa do their different neck on their altos and on some of their tenors, but this is something completely different. It looks amazing, but it's also really, really cool. And actually, this copper neck, which isn't, by the way, the only option, 
This saxophone also comes with a silver neck, which does dramatically change the sound of the saxophone. I really prefer the copper because it gives a really warm sound to my ears when I'm playing it. I don't know what it sounds like to you, but when I'm playing it, it just sounds so much more fat and exciting to me. The mechanism on the saxophone is, it's amazing. It's very, very smooth. And he, he does a great job of setting these saxophones up. But apart from the way it's set up and the way it feels, there's also lots of cool innovations on here. I mean, he's got done lots of cool things like, look at the shape of these palm keys here, fantastic. Also the shape of the side keys here, which at the start actually took me a couple of minutes to get used to because they do feel very different. But they do, when you get used to them, they do actually feel great. There's no F sharp, high F sharp on this. But check this out. This is the only saxophone in the world, apparently, to have a single piece bell all the way. So one piece from here all the way to here. Normally we have a join here. And Dave was telling me that this helps for the resonance in the bell as well. There's just, there's tons of extra features. We've got this little extra bar down here. He's shaped the thumb rest, which actually feels quite comfortable. Also, check out these uh, guards on the lower keys. These are amazing. Very cool styling on the double arms down here. There's just, I mean, there's so many little extra features on here. Little adjustment screws, tons of things that are just very, very different and very, very cool. Now, something that's really interesting to me about these saxophones is that Dave Walker, yes, he designs them, but they have a really big business called Geneva instruments and Geneva make brass band instruments for all over the world actually. They've got a big factory in the Czech Republic where they produce those instruments but also these saxophones come out of there. So it's really interesting how Dave's managed to produce really top quality instruments in my opinion at least out of the factory in the Czech Republic and then he brings the saxophones back to Leeds here in the UK and he finishes the setup and all the fine tuning on them before they go out to new owners. So there's some proper technology and design and personalization that's going on with these saxophones, unlike lots of other saxophones that are just produced by the same factories that produce saxophones in China or Taiwan for all the other brands. And that's quite interesting. There's nothing wrong with Chinese instruments. There's some fantastic instruments coming out of China. But I like the fact that these instruments are coming from somebody who is actually making their own choices about the design. They've got control of the whole manufacturing process right from the design through all the materials and through to the finishing uh, instead of sort of outsourcing it to lots of different factories. <laughs> So what about sound? Well, I have to say when I first picked up the saxophone and started playing it, I couldn't believe the sound in the middle register, like D with the octave key on. It's got such a big, fat sound. All over the saxophone, it sounds lovely and warm and resonant. But the more you play it, at least the more I play it, the more I'm amazed by the, 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 like the size of the sound. It's got a huge sound, the saxophone. Uh, and if you really push it, you can get it to go in all sorts of different directions. For me, it's definitely got that vintage quality, the sort of warmth, fatness of it. But you can also push it and get a contemporary sound in it. And I felt, uh, although my initial thoughts were it reminded me of the Yanagisawa silver and bronze saxophone that I tested. You can check that, um, that comparison video up here. But the more that I play this, the sound is very different to that Yanagisawa because although the Yanagisawa uh, has got some of the same elements, I suppose, yes, it's silver and it's got a different metals in it and stuff, the Yanagisawa has got a very predefined sound to it. Whereas this, to me, has got a lot more variation in the sound and you can do a lot more with it. And so that's what really caught my ear about the sound on this saxophone. I also think the more that I play this, the more that I will, I will grow into it. Uh, because it's sort of surprising me every time that I pick it up and practice on it. Yeah, the Altissimo works really well on this. It pops out great. The Overtone series actually is excellent as well. You don't really have to work very hard to get them out. They sound very, very clear and they're in tune up there as well. <laughs> Yeah, 
it really sounds great. And actually when you push it, you can get a really fantastic big fat sound. <laughs> So just before I get on to playing the saxophone, tell me what's your dream saxophone? Is it this one? I'm starting to think this might be my dream saxophone, but let me know in a comment. Is it a saxophone that I've reviewed or is it something completely different? I'd love to know. So we've talked about mechanism, we've talked about sound, we've talked about altissimo. What about intonation? Well, overall, the intonation is pretty good. Now, I did find there's a couple of things that I had to get used to on this saxophone. The copper neck, for one, is quite interesting to me because it does heat up and cool down pretty fast. And I found, for me, that I had to think about that when I was preparing or warming up the saxophone. But, you know, once you got it warmed up, it does sound great. The intonation is really, really good particularly the low notes. There's no real standout notes that were problematic for me. It just took a little bit of getting used to it. And I think part, part of what that was is the fact that the sound is so big and wide on this. Unlike something like a Yamaha or even the um, WO10 Yanagisawa, which are all very preset, like perfectly in tune and everything's accurate. This has got a lot more to it. And I found that for me, that meant that I need to spend a little bit more time on it to get used to it. But once I'm used to it, then the intonation feels comfortable to me. Now, of course, we have to have a conversation about price. I mentioned at the start of the video that this is an expensive saxophone, and I guess you shouldn't be surprised about that when you think that this is something special. There aren't many of them around. So this saxophone retails for £7,000. That's about US dollars and of course, that's if you can actually get hold of one of these. Now, it's not the most expensive saxophone I've reviewed. Uh, I was looking at the Yam Yanagisawa uh, TWO32. We actually reviewed the 9932, which is the previous model. But if you were to buy the new Yanagisawa solid silver and bronze saxophone, the TWO32, that's actually seven and a half thousand pounds or nearly ten thousand dollars. So 500 pounds more than this or a thousand US dollars more than this. But this um, lineage saxophone at £7,000 is slightly more expensive than the Reference 36 Selma, which is about £6,500 or $8,300. And of course, it's considerably more expensive than the Yamaha 82Z, which is about £4,500 or $5,400. So it's a lot more money, but what are you getting for that extra money? Well, first of all, you're getting something that I think is different. Not only does it look different and it sounds different, but I think mechanically it's significantly different. And I wonder if we're gonna see some of these sorts of innovations on this saxophone. I mean, a lot of it's stuff you can't see too about dimensions inside the, uh, the tube, the materials. I wonder if we're gonna to start to see some of these sorts of innovations in saxophones in the coming years. Because to me, this is one of the few things I've tried that actually is significantly different to all the other saxophones that's on the market. And I think if you're looking for something that does set you apart as a saxophone player, you know, in terms of the sound and what it gives you as a player, then this is a saxophone that would give you that. Of course, a lot, of the, a lot about the way you sound and the way you play comes from you internally. But I think also as a player, we get a lot of inspiration from what comes out of the saxophone that drives us to want to pick up the saxophone the next day or that wants us to explore different sounds and different parts of our playing. So that's why for me, even though you may not be able to hear or the audience may not be able to hear as much of a difference, if it inspires me as a player to play that saxophone, then that's worth any price because that's what it's all about. I spend a good portion of my life blowing into a piece of tubing and I wanna make sure it's something that I actually really enjoy playing into. Right, so now it's time to have a listen to how this saxophone sounds. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play through four different pieces from the Sax School Lesson Library in four different styles. So I'm gonna start off with a classic Ben Webster transcription, I Got It Bad, to see what it sounds like in a vintage -y type of piece. Then I'm gonna play the classic Wilton Felder solo over Street Life, so we can hear how it sounds in a sort of fusion-y, poppy, funky sort of piece. 
I'm going to play through the classic Bonacera solo by Sam Butera from the Louis Prima track. So we can hear how it sounds in a bluesy, jump jivey sort of, sort of uh, style. And then I'm going to finish up by playing through a classical piece, uh, Rimsky Korsakov, Flight of the Bumblebee, just for a bit of fun to see how the technique works with the mechanism on this saxophone. Now I'm going to play through all four pieces in one take. There's probably going to be some mistakes in there. I'm not worried about that. I just want to see how it feels straight out the gate when I'm playing through. I'm using the same mouthpiece I've used for all these reviews, which is a Theo 1A Slant Sig Size 8 Hard Rubber Mouthpiece. Uh, if you're interested in Theo 1A Mouthpieces, there's a link below where you can get a discount on these, actually. I'm a Leger Signature Reed artist, so I'm using Leger Signature Size 2.5 reeds, and I'm recording with a really simple Rode NT1A microphone straight into my computer with no... Um, effects, no reverb, no EQ. It's just down and dirty, clean signal so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, let's go.
So what do you think about that, about the Oldroyd Walker lineage tenor? I mean, I think it's pretty incredible. Could you hear any differences in there, maybe to other saxophones that I've reviewed? What surprised me about that saxophone is that, to me, I can get a vintage sound out of it. I can also get a classical sound out of it. I can get a contemporary, funky, fusion-y sort of sound out of it. And I can push it and get a bluesy solo sound out of it as well, like a jump jivey sound. So all of those styles to me sounded right. And I think the more that I played that sax, I could even get more out of, out of it than that. And I didn't feel like it held me back in any way with the technique. I know I made a few glitches in there, but overall, it just, it's exciting to me to play. The other thing that you didn't hear on that recording is I also did some tests with the AKG414 microphone that I normally use for these videos. And I have to say, this saxophone sounds incredible on that microphone with a, a wider spectrum of response. There's actually quite a lot that's coming out of the saxophone that you're not hearing on that recording. And that's what su surprised me the most about this saxophone compared to the Yamaha 82Z or the Yanagasawa uh, or any of the other saxophones that I've tested, the Reference 36, uh, the Custom Raw, this has got something special in it. And I think if you get an opportunity to play one, you should really take it because it's only then that you'll get to really fully appreciate what it's capable of. That being said, it is a super expensive saxophone. And I'm not sure, this, this is the most exciting saxophone that I've tested so far. Will it be joining my, my family of saxophones over there? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But I'd love to hear what you think about this saxophone. So let me know in a comment if you think this is something special. Can you hear some qualities in there that excite you? Or if you've had a chance to have a play of one of these, then uh, let me know in a comment as well. So don't forget to check out the other review videos where I'm looking at the Yamaha A2Z, comparing some Yanagasawas. There's the Selma SBA versus the Reference 36, very interesting comparison. And also the uh, Trevor James Custom Raw, which is a really surprising saxophone and I think price-wise is an amazing option. Uh, and also, if you want to take things a bit further with your playing and find out a bit more about sax school, then come and join us at mcgillmusic.com. We've got thousands and thousands of students from all over the world at all levels, from absolute beginner right through to people that are making albums and out gigging regularly. And there's so many resources in there that will help you. Plus, I've got myself and my team of tutors in there to guide you along the process and our amazing community, which is fantastic for keeping you encouraged and motivated along the way. So you can find out about that at mcgillmusic.com. But whatever you're doing, make sure you keep practicing, having fun, and uh, stay in touch. I want to catch up with you on the next video.